Welcome to Course 2, Unit 4, Lesson 3, Book Value with Preferred Stock. In this lesson, we have two lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is how to account for preferred stock on a balance sheet, and what is a 10Q? So, let's get started. When we were going through the two previous lessons, you were probably wondering how uh, we could account for common stock and preferred stock being on the same balance sheet. Um, in, the, in some lessons that we did in the first course, uh, where we calculated the uh, book value of a company, um, we were always doing that whenever there was just common stock uh, for that company. But whenever you have preferred stock and common stock, if you remember, the preferred shareholders actually own some equity in the company. And so when a company has preferred stock and common stock, we have to account for that whenever we're figuring out the book value if we're going to buy common shares versus preferred shares. So that's something that you really got to know if you're going to be buying common stock. And so that's what this lesson is going to teach you to do is to account for that difference between those two whenever a company has preferred and common stock issued. So in order to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and uh, continue working with the company that we used in the last lesson, which was the stock ticker SPG. So if we go here to MSN Money and we type in SPG, we're going to go ahead and pull up this is the common shares for Simon Property Group. If you remember before, we were looking at the preferred stock for the Simon Property Group. So we came to the common stock and we're gonna look at the common stock ticker, okay? And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look at the balance sheet because that's where we're gonna be able to uh, decipher the common versus the preferred shares. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the balance sheet right here Okay, and when we click on the balance sheet, it brings this up and we're looking at the interim balance sheet for the first quarter of 2012 for the Simon Property Group. Okay, so as we come down, we can see that the balance sheet is broken down into the assets and then it's also broken down into the liabilities right here. And then the difference between the assets and the liabilities is our total equity, which that number is right here. Okay, so before, when we wanted to figure out the book value of a company, all we did is we took the total equity of the company and then we divided it by the total common shares and that gave us our book value. Um, as you look here on this uh, balance sheet, um, if, if that's how we were going to do it, and let's just assume that this company had no preferred stock, it just had common stock. What we'd do is we'd take that 6,000 and we, I'm going to go ahead and do my math over here in Excel. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take that 6,000, and we're going to divide that by the, the total common stock, which is the 303.1. Okay, so we go 303.1, and we hit enter. Okay, and you can see our result came to be $20.05. So a lot of people who might not have a lot of depth uh, in, in this field where you're, where you're calculating the book value of a company might come in here and quickly figure out the book value to be $20.05. But that would be wrong because when you look at this balance sheet, you can see that we have the common shares outstanding listed at 303.1 and then you have the total preferred shares outstanding listed as 0.8. Okay, so that 0.8 is not being accounted for right there. And so that book value of $20.05 is wrong. Okay, now let me show you something why you've got to be careful whenever you're using the numbers that MSN or any one of these, Google or Yahoo or whatever, um, when they're telling you ratios and they're telling you numbers, you've got to be real careful if you're not the one who's actually doing the math from the balance sheet or the income statement or whatever the case might be. So I'm going to show you what uh, MSN is showing the book value for this Simon Property Group as. And just, just so you know, Simon Property Group isn't a stock that I'm recommending by all means. It's just a stock that we're using because it has preferred shares. So when we go here to the financial highlights, let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, right over here, the book value is listed as $20.05, which is exactly what we just calculated. So the calculation that's being done here is wrong, okay? And so if you were just going to look at that quickly and not actually go into the balance sheet and do the math, you would be misled as to what the book value of this company actually is. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out what the book value really is for this company. So in order to do that, we're going to have to pull up what's called the 10Q. 
Okay, and that's the quarterly report that the Simon Property Group would have to file with the federal government in order for, to do their taxes. So let's pull that up, and what you do is you go in here, you see where it says SEC filings? Okay, we're going to go ahead and click that. And it pulls up all the documents that the Simon Property Group has filed. It has the date received right here. Okay, and what we're looking for is the 10Q, because that's the quarterly report where they're going to uh, that balance sheet that we looked at earlier, that's where that all those numbers are actually coming from this document that we're going to be pulling up. This would be the raw information, and that's the interpolated information that MSN has pulled from the report to make it easy for you to view. Okay, so when we go into that 10Q report, let's go ahead and pull that up, you can see that it's the formal report that they had to file on whatever day and all, the, all this information. If you're investing in individual shares and you're investing a lot of money in individual shares, you're going to want to become very familiar with the 10Q report because you're going to want to go in here and read all the fine print, which is where you get the best information is in the fine print. Um, and you're going to want to pick apart all these, all this data that they're giving you and all the information that they're giving you. Okay, so you can see the very first thing that they have on this report, you can see that they have their balance sheet is the very first thing we got here. So you have the assets listed, you got their total assets right there, their liabilities, and then they have the equity listed. Okay, now when we dig into the equity here, um, this is where we're going to see what they're valuing their preferred stock at. And you can see right here, it's, and these, these numbers are in thousands, okay, so that's 44.9 million, okay, that's what their preferred stock is listed at, okay, and we had to come into this report to find that. Okay, in order to show you the difference between the SEC filing report and also in the balance sheet that we were looking at earlier, I have both of them pulled up side by side. So you can see the SEC filing on the right and then the information that MSN had pulled onto the balance sheet on the left. Okay, so whenever we uh, have this information side by side, we can see that the total equity listed right here is this $6 billion. Okay, and now that $6 billion is the same $6 billion that we see over here listed right there for the total stockholders equity. So that's where those two numbers marry up. Okay, so let me show you where the preferred stock is listed at. Now the par value for the preferred stock is listed right here, that 44965 now, when we look over on the balance sheet for the MSN version, you can see it's this 4497. Okay, so if we want to know how much of the common shareholders' equity is right here, we have to subtract that 4497 out of that figure. Okay, so that's this number right here. They show you exactly those uh, pre that preferred stock we were looking at in the previous lesson, how they had 1 million shares uh, initially. Um, offered. This is what they're down to right now and then the liquidation value and this is what they're currently listing it at. Okay, so that's the number we have to use in order to subtract that from our equity. So let's go ahead and go back to our calculator here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and subtract that equity out. So the total equity is 6077.91. Okay, and I got to put an equal sign in front there in order for it to do the math. Okay, so we got that number in, and then we're going to subtract the 44.97, because that's the preferred stocks value, okay? And when we do that, we get uh, 6032000000 for the total equity, okay? So once we have that number, all we're going to do is then uh, divide it by the total common shares. So we got the $6 billion, we're going to divide that, uh, I'm going to hit equals, Hit this number, subtracted by, or I'm sorry, divided by our 303.1. Okay, and when we hit enter, that gives us $19.90. Okay, so that's the bottom line figure. That number right there is the number that we're looking at for the book value on the common shares of this company. So that's, that's what you really got to pay attention to. If you are going to be assessing the equity growth of this business for the last 10 years to see how much that equity's grown, which you'll, you, you know from doing the intrinsic value calculation, that's really important to know. Um, you would have to go back and do this for each year to make sure that you're measuring that equity growth properly. Um, some people might not want to do that and they might want to avoid uh, buying common shares of a, of a company that also has preferred stock out on it just for that reason alone because uh, you might not want to do the math. But um, 
that's something that you have to consider because even though that's about a 15 cent difference, over time that could that could really have a, a lasting impact on what you're actually estimating that equity growing at. So I find this really important to do. I think it's it's really important to understand how all of this works more so than maybe a, a adjusting the value for five cents, but understanding the fundamentals and how all this stuff works is what's really important. And so hopefully I've given you some tools here to use and some more information on the balance sheet and how it all fits together. And that's how you can uh, look at the common shares and the preferred shares together and still understand how much of that is yours depending on which type of asset you own. So in this lesson, we covered how to account for preferred stock on a balance sheet. And we also showed you what the 10Q report was. And I hope that you guys learned some uh, important information there. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson.